BDNF, a summary for you, done by yours truly. So bear with me. I'm not going to give you that in depth. If you want more in depth, I will try to cover that in future videos, or you can look at past videos on this channel. But here's what you need to know about BDNF. BDNF is a protein factor that's secreted in the brain. We all make a certain amount based on our genetics, based on our environment, based on all sorts of factors, some of them unknown. But BDNF and how much we secrete can be influenced. And that is the point of some of the information I'm covering on this channel. Um, the theme with BDNF is exploration. It's a protein that tells us our cells in the nervous system in particular to repair, um, to grow, and even at times to die. It, it, is, it depends on which receptor site it's interacting with. So that's worth knowing. Do we know how much we need? No, nobody knows. Uh, do we know how much is too much? That's unknown as well. Um, but here are a few basic things about BDNF. One way to influence BDNF is through exercise. Cardiovascular exercise appears to have a stronger effect than strength training so far in terms of the research. Now, what you need to know is not a lot of research has been done on the strength training side of things. A lot has been done in terms of cardiovascular exercise. So that's worth keeping in mind. And in my opinion, the research that has been done on strength training has not been well designed. So more research needs to be done and, and that will probably be coming out, I'm sure, in the future. And I will try to keep you apprised of that. Um, thing two, nutrition has a heavy influence on BDNF and BDNF levels, that, the natural levels that we secrete. Um, how you eat is probably just as important as what you eat. And when I say how, what I mean I'm referring to would be something like intermittent fasting. The timing of when you eat can actually affect the levels of BDNF that you secrete. And it is one way to influence how much BDNF gets secreted. Uh, there are lots of other reasons to intermittently fast, um, which I will try to link to a video about that that I previously shot. Um, also, what you eat, things that we know affect BDNF, turmeric, omega-3s, um, Tulane honey, which is this Malaysian honey that needs to be more well studied because there's lots of medicinal benefits to it, um, blueberries, antioxidants. It's likely that many plants and a plant-based diet um, due to all the antioxidants and polyphenols, um, other great constituents that are in plants are likely to be beneficial. So check that out. Uh, also avoiding white sugar, white flour, um, high fats of the wrong sort and avoiding being obese. All of these affect BDNF levels. And again, we always get into the question of, is it the chicken or the egg? Is it the fact that I am obese that is decreasing my levels of BDNF or the fact that I have low BDNF levels that are contributing to my uh, uh, predisposition to get obese? Who knows? We don't know, the, but we do see a correlation between these two things. A third piece, BDNF, and this is a little bit new and I will cover a video about this in the future, but BDNF has been correlated as a marker and an influencer and perhaps uh, a major player uh, in terms of sleep and sleep regulation, circadian rhythms. Now, this makes complete sense if you think about when the HPA axis gets thrown off, a lot of the effects we see uh, particularly when somebody has the most common way that that gets thrown off, which would be a hypercortisol state under high stress long term. Uh, we see uh, sleep and insomnia being affected and um, to know that BDNF levels are also low when the HPA axis is thrown off um, makes sense. Because that leads me into my fourth point, um, BDNF is a huge influencer when it comes to the HPA axis. Um, it may be one of the regulators of the HP axis. So all these things that affect BDNF, the fact that you can intermittently fast, uh, you can eat certain things, you can exercise, it's possible those are resetting the HP axis. Um, now that's just my theory. Um, haven't seen that anywhere in the research as far as I know, uh, but it would make complete sense from a physiological standpoint. And if you look at the symptoms that we see, um, with something like Cushing's disease, which is an endocrine disorder that causes hypercortisol states, 
and you compare that to, to the destabilization of the HP axis and the symptoms we see, they, they mimic one another. No, 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 blah, blah, blah. Sorry, can't talk. They mimic one another in that there's massive overlap. So think about it. Uh, let me give you some symptoms of Cushing's disease. Abdominal obesity, obesity uh, that specific to the trunk region. Also moon fasces, which is like your face gets swollen. So there's a propensity to put weight on in the, in the um, trunk and in the face. Um, insulin resistance, a type two diabetes. Uh, insomnia, immune dysfunction. Um, mood swings, particularly rage and impulse control. Memory difficulties, concentration difficulties, anxiety, depression, hypertension, loss of emotional control in general. All these are, are very common symptoms of someone who has PTSD and then and the overlapping things that go along with that, along with their HPA axis getting thrown off. So it makes sense. Um, and if you note some of the things I've spoken about already that tend to influence BDNF levels, do so probably through multiple mechanisms. So intermittent fasting, for example, um, tends to reduce uh, weight, particularly in the abdominal region, which you will know that's a particular symptom for HP axis being thrown off and hypercortisol states and Cushing's disease. So that's kind of interesting. Additionally, it probably resets circadian rhythms um, because we know that food is this, and the timing of when you eat um, can have powerful effects on uh, the circadian rhythm and sleep-wake cycle. Um, also decreases your risk of, well, decreases insulin resistance and stabilizes blood sugar. So all these things are, again, you know, what's affecting what well or what comes first. We don't really know, but we just see this correlation of all these benefits with intermittent fasting and the HPA axis being thrown off, BDNF levels being decreased, and wow, we have this, you know, wonderful thing called intermittent fasting that affects that. So stay tuned. That's a summary of BDNF, uh, the best I can do. And uh, I would love to hear your comments. We'd love to hear um, if you find information out there that um, contradicts what I'm saying. This is about learning for people that are following this channel in addition to myself. Um, and there's a lot of um, contradictory information. And so having a discussion would be great. Thanks for tuning in and um, adios.